Man lost to the Amazon is forced to take extreme measures to make it out alive. Discovering new places and exchanging cultures, or in other words, traveling the world, is most of people's passion. People like Yosef, a guy born in Tel Aviv. In 1959, he always wanted to see and explore the different interesting places, but he didn't take any caution about the danger that he might find himself in. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to Did You Know and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. As a young man, he joined the Israeli military. To his delight, as a Navy recruit, he not only got to travel out of the country, but he also learned many several survival tips, became fit and strong, and saved a lot of money. Eventually, Yossi became inspired to travel to Venezuela by Henry Cherie's book Papillon, an autobiography about being wrongly convicted of murder in France, being imprisoned in French Guiana, and eventually escaping to Venezuela. So Yossi made the trip. While hitchhiking from Venezuela to Colombia to further explore South America, Yossi met a man named Marcus Stamm, a teacher from Switzerland. The two traveled together, this time to La Paz, Bolivia. The two new friends chose the Amazon woods to meet up in order to discuss their journey plans and details. By coincidence, the two guys met a photographer obsessed over Amazon forests. He's called Kevin Gale. Before embarking into the Amazon, an Austrian man named Karl Ruprechter approached Yossi and his friends in La Paz. He claimed he was a geologist off to find a gold quarry and impressed the trio with knowledge of the terrain. They didn't hesitate to follow him into the vast and dangerous wilderness. They started their journey toward the gold quarry in the small village of Aseriamas. The locals were kind and welcoming, giving them supplies, but also an ominous warning. The jungle holds great peril. The guys didn't take these warnings into consideration, believe that their experience and their well-built bodies will help them fight all the obstacles they may face. But apparently things weren't as easy as they thought. Marcus Strom, the Swiss teacher, began to develop trench foot. As the days went on, the infection became more and more painful. He was slowing the group down, and they were running out of food. These are not good signs, apparently. The guys didn't know what to do about it. How would they get something to eat? Oh yeah, Carl had a shotgun. This is great. Then they went looking for animals to hunt. However, all they found were monkeys. At first, they didn't even have the idea of having them, then they found themselves obliged to eat them. They couldn't help their hunger. They just didn't have any other solution. But Marcus preferred to die hungry than to eat a grilled monkey. As Marcus' conditions worsened, the group could no longer continue walking to Carl's promised gold quarry. Instead, they built a raft and tried to float down the Tuichi River. It was then Carl began acting suspicious and scared. Apparently, he couldn't even swim. What else was he hiding? Afraid of the water, Carl went back to the nearest village on foot, taking the weakened Marcus with him. Yossi and Kevin thought they'd be fine sailing on, but soon hit a powerful current. Kevin swam to shore, but Yossi wasn't so lucky. After getting swept down a waterfall, Yossi hit his head on the sharp rocks on the way. For a half an hour, he fought to keep his wounded head above water, gasping for each life-saving breath. When the water finally calmed down, Yossi swam to shore. However, the moment he stepped onto the land, he was overwhelmed with a sense of doom. He was alone in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. How would he ever survive? Yossi's spirits lifted when he noticed his backpack miraculously resting on the river's shore. In addition to some helpful supplies, the bag contained a special book. 
It had brought Yossi's uncle a lot of luck during the Holocaust, and now it would hopefully help keep Yossi alive. The first danger Yossi encountered was a wild boar. Boars tend to be extremely aggressive and can rip right through skin with their tusks. Yossi ran for his life through the jungle, eventually shaking the boar off, but also wearing himself out. Less than a week into his solitude, Yossi noticed something in the sky. As it came closer, he realized it was a plane, the same type in which he'd flown to La Paz. Desperate, he called out, waving his arms up and down, but he went unnoticed. A few nights later, Yossi woke up in excruciating pain. He itched and ached all over his body and couldn't figure out why. It wasn't until the sun rose that he noticed he'd slept on a termite nest. After the first week, Yossi's food supply was gone and he was so hungry. He felt hunger like he'd never imagined. He searched for fruits and bird's eggs and ate dead monkeys when he spotted them. Despite his efforts to keep himself fed, Yossi quickly lost weight. To make matters worse, he was dehydrated, sleep deprived, injured from the waterfall, and covered in termite bites. He really needed a break, but the jungle was not about to ease up on him. Once he finally got to sleep, he was abruptly awakened by the sound of a growl. As soon as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, he realized he was staring straight into the eyes of a full-grown jaguar, ready to pounce. With his heart beating nearly out of his chest, his instincts took over. He reached for his lighter and his mosquito repellent as fast as he could, creating a flamethrower to scare off the jag. Luckily, it worked but it became nearly impossible for a paranoid Yossi to fall asleep after that. The fauna of the jungle was an obvious threat, but the flora and climate were just as dangerous. When the foursome had begun their hike, the rain season was still two weeks away, but now it came pouring down all day long, creating floods and threatening to drown Yossi once again. As Yossi was too busy trying to wade through the knee-deep water, he could no longer watch his step. Before he could correct his mistake, however, he found himself sinking into quicksand. Just when he accepted his fate, the floods moved and he pulled himself out. His socks and shoes had been wet and dirty for too long, and he began to develop a foot infection. To distract himself from the pain so he could keep walking, he did the only thing he could think of. Yossi rolled around on a nest of fire ants, letting them sting him everywhere. Adrenaline shot through his body and he found strength to keep going. Out of nowhere, he noticed a woman beside him. He couldn't believe his eyes. They spent the next few days in each other's company, her presence reinforcing his will to live. But who was she? He woke up just after a few days to find that the woman who was by his side was just in his head. She wasn't real. He felt lost and weak and fell on his knees crying, his sadness and hoping that all this tragedy would end. Suddenly he heard the vague sound of an engine coming from the river. He figured it was another plane that wouldn't notice him, but he followed the noise nonetheless. Once he reached the water, he noticed a boat in the distance. The boat he saw was real. He felt a huge amount of hope, and it was a boat that his friend Kevin, who had made a hard and long effort to rescue his friend, and eventually he made it. He asked a guy called Kudela to bring his boat to help Yosef. He felt safe again. The guy was literally hopeless. Yossi had lost over 30 pounds during his three weeks on the verge of death. Meanwhile, Carl and Marcus were nowhere to be found. Yossi later learned Carl was a wanted criminal who had taken strangers into the jungle before. His health wasn't stable and well. That's why he went to the hospital in which he stayed almost three months. During that time, he replayed all what he lived there, bad and good things. He even wanted to share his story with others there, even though most of them found crazy and hard to believe. When Yossi revisited Bolivia, the local people were delighted to see him. 
He moved there for a while and helped build an eco-lodge from which the indigenous people could profit. He also worked on protecting intellectual properties of the people of that region. Yossi also published several books, including his own autobiography called Back from Tucci, the harrowing story of survival in the Amazon rainforest, and traveled the globe giving inspirational speeches. His idol, Henry Shari, would be proud. His books were so good that they were adapted to a movie, a movie called Jungle, in which Daniel Radcliffe played and he stated that he really liked his role in such an awesome movie. Kevin and Yossi remained friends. After appearing on the Doko series, I Shouldn't Be Alive, Kevin was also involved with the production of Jungle. Although he continued pursuing his love for photography, he was not as eager to return to the rainforest as Yossi. Their real hikers, their journey to the Amazon forest was their unforgettable memories. They lived so many hard experiences. They survived and their survival made them fearless, creative, and the most important thing is their friendship. Even though they can never forget